okay, I'll admit, I didn't have baby eating goblins on my Doctor Who bingo card. Baby blood and baby bones, baby butter for the baby skull. The song is pretty catchy though. Hello internet, I'm Ren, and today I want to talk about The Church on Ruby Road, the fourth and final Doctor Who special leading into Shudigatwa's series which broadcasts in May of this year. The episode is a fun and silly mashup of Gremlins and The Labyrinth, complete with baby stealing goblins, a couple musical numbers, and a series of accidents caused by the mischievous little guys. So let's get into it. This video will contain spoilers for The Church on Ruby Road and minor spoilers for a significant arc during Jodie Whittaker run on the show. The episode starts with a woman leaving a baby at the church on Ruby Road on Christmas Eve and disappearing into the night, while the doctor gives us a brief voiceover. Late on Christmas Eve, a stranger came to the church on Ruby Road. A voiceover which implies he knows who the woman is who left the baby. She was never seen again. No one ever knew her name. Until that night, a time traveler came to call. He also tells us they called her Ruby after the church where she was found. The child was taken in and they named her Ruby. Next, we see Ruby as a young woman, played by Millie Gibson, being interviewed on Davina McCall's show where she helps connect lost families. You don't mind me using the word foundling, do you? No, 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 that's fine. That's, I mean, it's what I am. I was found. I was found old. This is actually a real show that she actually does host in the UK. The goblins engineer a small accident on set. Later, Ruby is performing at a Christmas gig of some kind at a club when the goblins unplug her keyboard. We watch the doctor do a little dance as Ruby watches him, and I love it. He looks so happy and free in this moment. He stops another small accident from happening. <laughs> And they have kind of an odd interaction. Can I ask, does that happen to you a lot? All the time, but I, I'm, I'm just clumsy. No, no you're not. It's worse than that. Like, oh no, you're worse than clumsy. Okay, bye, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. On her way home, the gremlins, I mean goblins, try to drop a giant snowman on Ruby. It ends up falling on the doctor instead as he rushes to save a woman with a baby stroller. <laughs> But he's fine. A pram? A midnight. Really? If a bit judgmental. It's my shopping. It's Christmas Eve and Ruby comes home with some shopping. Her quirky neighbors are arguing about the blue box parked in the street. The goblins continue causing minor mayhem in Ruby's life. She gets home to her loving mom, Carla, who reveals they're taking in a foster baby for a few days. We're having a baby! No way, are you kidding? Little girl. Seriously? Isn't it brilliant? Coincidentally, the baby is also born on Christmas Eve. Oh. Today, Christmas Eve! That's amazing! What, what, how old? Newborn! No, that's a coincidence. A social worker delivers the baby, Lulu Bell. She's called Lulu Bell. And Carla and Ruby agree it's a terrible name. Oh, a terrible name. Oh, an absolutely terrible name. Oh, isn't it awful? Carla leaves Ruby in charge and runs out to do a bit more shopping. Rule number one. Don't lose the baby. We also meet Ruby's gran, Cherry. And where is my cup of tea? My favorite running gag in this episode is poor Cherry asking for a cup of tea over and over again. Can't get a cup of tea around here by love and money. And not getting it for ages. Ruby gets a call from Davina McCall letting her know that they didn't find any relatives at all in any of the databases. And it's not good news, I'm afraid. There is no trace of your mum or dad. Davina also asks her if she's been having a streak of bad luck since they've met. Ruby, have you been having any bad luck recently? Because she's been having a hard time. I've been in accidents, collisions. I've even been trampled by a moose. Up to and including a moose trampling. And she begs Ruby to tell her how to stop it. How do we stop them? I'm begging you. But not in time to stop her from getting crushed by a Christmas tree. Ruby hears some activity on the baby monitor and discovers that Lulu Bell has been taken by some mysterious creatures. She runs out onto the roof after them and hops onto a ladder hanging out of a flying pirate ship. And this is where she meets the doctor again. What the hell are you doing? He joins her on the ladder and they officially introduce themselves. What's your name? Ruby Sunday. Hello, Ruby Sunday. And it's a Sunday right now. That's a coincidence. I'm the doctor. He gives her an intelligent glove to hold on to the ladder with. I can't hold on gloves. Intelligent gloves. One each should work. One of his new inventions. Because I thought to myself, what's the problem with hanging on? It's all the friction and the weight and the burn, so I, I got rid of that. And they're pulled up into the ship. 
where they encounter all these little goblins. Oh yeah. Ruby tells the doctor it's her birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah, it's Lulu Bell's birthday. And it's your birthday on the same day. Another coincidence. He praises Lulu Bell's name because of course he does. That's such a brilliant name. No shops called Lulu Bell. <laughs> and explains about the coincidences. It's just a coincidence. Learn the language. Coincidence is what makes the baby tasty. And why the goblins have targeted Ruby and Lulu Bell. That's how these goblins work. Chance and coincidence and luck. That's how I spotted you. And that they're time raiders. These goblins are time riders. They can surf the waves of time. And they spotted the chance of coincidence and he went back and he wove you in. He does take some umbrage when Ruby refers to the goblins as time travelers, though. Why are you an expert in time traveling goblin? Uh, they are not time travelers. How dare? Time travelers are great. Like the best. Like wow. They escape their restraints. Wait, how did you do that? <laughs> I spent a long, hot summer with Harry Houdini. And sneak into the ship's equivalent of vents after the doctor figures out the vocabulary of the rope. Give me a hand! I am learning the vocabulary of rope! Ruby is adorably impressed. Will you just be rope? <laughs> As they're crawling around in the vents, we get the goblin song. The baby song says she's a treat. Okay, it's a bit more of a pop song when I expected a shanty, but it is quite catchy. <laughs> plan to feed the baby to the Goblin King and drop it on the world's slowest conveyor belt. The Goblin King is CGI, but the smaller goblins are actually all practical, which I always appreciate. The Doctor and Ruby keep the party going with a little song of their own. Rocket Janice! He unties the master knot. Me and Rose, we got just one hope. If I have understood that rope. And they escape with Lulu Bell before she can be eaten by the Goblin King. On their way down, we get this line. Love the glove, Ruby! Love the glove! <laughs> Which is certainly a choice. Goblins thwarted. They return to Ruby's flat and the doctor meets Cherry. And your name is Cherry. It is. Mm. Cherry Sunday. <laughs> like a tasty treat. Who is still being deprived of her cuppa. I've given up on that cuppa and opted for a life of abstinence. The doctor promises Ruby that the goblins probably won't invade, but they try to secure the kitchen just in case. Death trap! Check everything, the, uh, the Byron and the Plus! And she shows him her extended family of foster siblings, which her mother has plastered the fridge with photographs of. The doctor meets Ruby's mom. Ruby tells her about the call from Davina. They phoned from the TV show. Well, they didn't find anything. And she comforts her in the sweetest way. Because you're all mine. <laughs> That's what you are. You can wonder about your parents, but I wonder who I'd be without you. The doctor mentions he's also adopted. I'm adopted. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I only found out recently. As we discovered in the Timeless Child arc during 13's run. And it's another big coincidence. That's a coincidence. The coincidences continue to pile up. Oh, you were found in just like Ruby. An <laughs> even bigger coincidence. Yeah. Until the ceiling splits. Always with the property damage. Yeesh. The doctor investigates and is relieved to find that Lulu Bell is still there until he realizes that Ruby is nowhere to be found. Huh? What'd you think, Ruby? Ruby? Suddenly, Carla and Cherry don't remember her. Who's Ruby? I told you, this is Lulu. She's a right old pain on Christmas Eve. Do you remember Ruby? Watch your dark in our mood. And all of the pictures have vanished from the refrigerator. I do think it's weird that Carla basically gets a totally different personality without Ruby. Just put my name on the list when I need a bit of money. 800 quid per child. No, I'll say that. But when the doctor presses her, they both end up crying. Why would I want a daughter when I'm happy as I am? Then why are you crying? Why are you? And I do like that a deep part of her clearly misses Ruby. It's just strange how much more bitter and totally different she is, and how she seemingly only fosters for money now. One detail I do like, though, is that when Ruby is gone from Carla's life, the color is gone from her life. The apartment is duller, Carla's scarf goes from brightly patterned to plain and dark, most of the decorations disappear, etc. The doctor realizes that the goblins have gone back and taken baby Ruby from the church, so he resolves to go back and set things right. The doctor arrives to see the woman walking away and baby Ruby being snatched by a goblin from in front of the church. He springs into action, grabs the ladder, and uses the intelligent gloves to pull the ship back down. The goblin king gets impaled on the church spire, and the ship vanishes. Baby Ruby falls back to earth and lands safely in the doctor's arms, and he leaves her in front of the church. 
someone, a priest maybe, gets the baby, and the doctor watches the woman walk away. She is quite a slow walker, though, with how little progress she made in the time it took the doctor to save the baby, but he doesn't stop her and gets back into the TARDIS instead, reappearing in present-day London. The apartment is colorful again and Ruby is back. And I guess we don't get to know whatever the doctor must have figured out about who left her at the church. The doctor also quickly pops back to save Davina McCall from the Christmas tree. Cherry finally gets her tea. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I thought this day would never come. And Ruby works out that the doctor is a time traveler. He said he went back. What did he mean he went? When was Houdini? Houdini was like 1920s? She runs downstairs and asks Mrs. Flood if she's seen the doctor. She points behind her and gives Ruby an approving nod and tells her good luck. Ruby goes inside the TARDIS and marvels at it. Who are you? I'm the doctor. And then they disappear along with the TARDIS as they go off on their new adventures. And Mrs. Flood gives us this line. Never seen a TARDIS before. Letting us know there's more to her than it seems. And now we'll all be obsessively speculating about who she is until at least May. Not to mention the person who left Ruby at the church. How are we supposed to wait half a year to find out? With Mrs. Flood, I don't really have a concrete theory, but I don't think she specifically knows the doctor while she may know what Time Lords are. Because when she saw the police box parked in the street, she didn't immediately recognize it. How am I supposed to get round that great big thing? Or at least she didn't seem to, blaming her neighbor Abdul and saying that he put it there. But then after it vanishes and reappears, she clearly knows that it's a TARDIS. So she must know something about Time Lords, even if she isn't familiar with this specific TARDIS. But that's just my best guess. One little thing I also noticed is that the doors to Ruby and her neighbor's flats are all TARDIS blue, which is a really cute detail that feels almost like an invitation to the doctor to come visit. Overall, I liked this episode a lot, although parts of the story were a bit on the weaker side or felt a smidge rushed, such as the conclusion. For example, it just felt a little bit too easy how quickly he saved baby Ruby. But the baby-eating goblins that thrive on coincidence are fun villains with a classically Doctor Who explanation for what they do. And it was kind of funny that they were messing with Davina McCall just for fun. <sighs> Why did they pick on Davina McCall? Oh, that was just fun. <sighs> The Goblin King was pretty bland in terms of basically just being a giant CGI mouth. It was also strange that the Doctor knew the singing goblin by name. Rocket Janice! That said, Shudi Gatwa was born to play the Doctor. <laughs> oh, it's like a tapestry. It's gorgeous. He's funny and bubbly and effervescent and captures the character beautifully in his first solo debut. Oh, there's a brand new science for me and I love it. The language of luck. Millie Gibson is also a delight as Ruby. They have great chemistry together, and I'm so excited for their adventures. I also love Ruby's family, and I hope we get to see a lot more of them, and maybe meet some of her many foster siblings as well. One thing the episode certainly did was set up a few fascinating mysteries. Who's Mrs. Flood? Who are Ruby's biological parents? Why didn't she even get distant relatives in any DNA database? It's enough to make the fandom absolutely feral with curiosity. I assume the explanation will be that Ruby is from another world or something, rather than the mundane answer that somehow not a single extended relative has used a DNA test kit. I also really enjoyed the elements the episode borrowed from Gremlins, a classic Christmas movie with little guys wreaking havoc and causing accidents, and Labyrinth, another baby-stealing musical goblin spectacle which starred David Bowie. The result is a goofy, silly holiday adventure and a delightful primer to a hopefully wonderful new series of Doctor Who to come. But that's just my opinion. What did you think of The Church on Ruby Road? Any theories about Mrs. Flood? How about Ruby's parentage? Let me know in the comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time. Vita Zane.